All right. Um, let me afternoon, with... Professor. Oh, good afternoon, Tia. Um, let me share with you what we uh, got last time and then we start with that, okay? So remember, we are talking about uh, the critical path method uh, in module seven about project management, right? Um, we are looking at the wedding on slide 40 of the module seven. Then the wedding is a project and we can break it out into the activity, right? So in the first column right here, we have the so-called work breakdown structure. So we, we break the whole things down into the components, right? First of all, the bride to be and the groom to be, we need to select the date uh, for the wedding. And then second, they have to find the location, right? And there are no requirements before selecting the date and the location. So that's why in the IP column, we have the, the dashes here, right? Um, and at C, the, in the ITVC, the, Bride to be and the group to be, we need to come up with the guest list and then send out the invitation cards. But to send out the invitation cards, they need to know the date and the location printed on the cards, right? So that's why A and B are the prerequisite for C. Or A and B technically are called the immediate predecessor, right? The requirement right before. So A and B are the immediate or the IP. Uh, immediate predecessor for C. And to choose an entertainment company, you have to know the date, right? Uh, so that you can sign a contract with the, the band, the musical band or, or any um, entertainment company. So um, A is required right before D. Uh, and A and C are the IBs. Uh, again, they are in the immediate predecessor for E, right? Because to, to choose a catering company, you need to know the date. And second, you need to know how many guests there will be. So A and C are required right before E. Um, and finally, for the party to be joyful and, and, and successful, right? You need to have entertainment and food ready. So D and E are the, pre, the, the requirement right before A, right? We, we need to get D and E done before we can start A. Um, so that the, those are the first two columns. The first column is just a breakdown, the simple breakdown, right? But the second column tells us the precedence relationship among the activities inside the project, right? So the sec second column here is very crucial for us to understand what is going on with our project. And the third column is a normal time, how long it takes to complete each of the uh, activities. So the, these, these are assumed to be correct and fixed, right? That's a, an essential assumption of the critical path method. So last time we, we did this, and then uh, I briefly show you the activity on Node, right? Project network. The AON network is just a map, a visual map like this, in which we can see the components of the project, right? We break the whole thing down into A, B, C, D, E, and F. So those are those constitute the so-called work breakdown structure of the project. And second, through the arrows, now we can see the dependencies among the activities, right? For example, C can only be started uh, after A and B are both done, right? If A is done, but B is not done, then you cannot start C. Uh, you have to start, uh, you can, you have to finish both A and B done before you can start C, right? And then to start D, we have to get A done. To start E, we have to get A and C done. And to get, to have the wedding party, we have to have entertainment and food ready, right? So actually the map here tells us a lot about the relationship among the activities in the, in the project. The third um, information that we can see here is a completion time of the activities. One week for A, four, week, four weeks for B, three weeks for C, right? All of these time estimates are assumed to be correct and fixed. So that will simplify our analysis a lot. And then the fourth P 
piece of information that we can see here is the pathways through the project. So um, a pathway will start from a free activity like A and B. And then we're gonna follow, we, we track along the arrow. The arrows here are soon to be only one way, right? So that it will end somewhere. Then we're gonna have the pathway. So in our particular example here, we have all, uh, we have four possible pathways through. Path number one is A, D, and F, right? We, we track along the arrows and we're gonna end at some point uh, here. Uh, this this endpoint here doesn't have to be only one point like in our project, in our example. It can be multiple endpoints. And the endpoints doesn't mean that the end of the project, okay? It just techni technically does the end of the pathway. All right, so again, uh, the uh, four possible pathways through. Path number one is A, B, F. All right, I hope you see that. Path number two is we go down to the second arrow. It is A, E, F. And then the third arrow, A, C, E, F, right? Um, and after we exhaust all of the pathways starting from A, then we can start it uh, from B, right? So B, the, from B, there's only one pathway. So B, C, E, F, right? So in total, we have four possible pathways through the project. All right, so let me... Uh, um, and uh, with that, right now we can we can do more. So that's uh, the first step that we have to do. And in the second step, that we will have to find the critical path uh, for this project. So I would like to go back to the whiteboard. Okay, so um, we are still at module seven about project management. All right, and um, we are at the big topic of the critical path method. Or CPM. Uh, and the, the ultimate goal of learning this method is uh, for us to schedule our project, right? So it is for scheduling purposes. The knowledge, the method that we learn here, will have to have us to schedule our project. All right. Um, and the example that we talk about is the wedding example. This is module seven, slide 40. Let me make sure. Okay. And the first method, uh, the first thing that we did last time is a, a AON project network, right? It's just a visualization of the uh, of the project that we have at hand. All right, and um, today we will uh, move on to the next step where we need to find a critical path. Sometimes we might might find multiple critical paths. Right. So from now on, we would uh, call them as a CP or the CPs. Let me get you the uh, definition of a critical path. The critical path is uh, the longest pathway through the project. Okay. So it's just a definition. Among all of the pathways through the project, all possible pathways through the critical path is the longest pathway. That's it, right? That's a, that's a uh, definition of the critical path. 
So why do we have to find the longest pathway? Why do we call it as a critical path? Because the critical path determines the completion time, I mean, the shortest completion time of the entire project. Why? The critical path determines how long it takes to complete the project as the shortest. So that's why we call it as a critical path, right? So the critical path is, is the, the key concept that we have to learn here in the critical path method. And the critical path method is a key model that we learn in project uh, management uh, in this module seven, right? So the concept of the critical path is, is critical in, in this module seven. Okay, so uh, actually there are four methods for us to find the critical path. So there are four methods that we're gonna learn here to find the critical path. Method number one is called the tally method. We're gonna work on that first, okay? The second method is called the Gantt chart method. Method three is called the boxed AON method. And method four is called the table method. Right. So our task is to go through all these four methods. And that will help you with question 25 in the homework. Right. Uh, the first four questions I already cover and uh, is that due today or those, sorry due this friday right uh those four questions are due this uh, friday and question 25 26 will be due later on when when we cover them um so what we're doing next is very similar to what you would do for question 25. all right so that's um that's the layout of the four methods so now let's uh, go through uh, the methods one by one. So method number one is called the uh, tally method. We call that as a tally method because we're going to list out all possible pathways through the project. And then the longest one will be our critical path. All right, so that's a definition method. So the tally method is a definition method to find a CP. All right, so we have the following. I will li list out all possible pathway through the project. We know that there are four of them. Right, so if you look at the AON project network, then you will see uh, the pathways uh, one by one. Path number one is ADF. Path number two is AEF, right? We start with the free activity on the left-hand side and then track along the arrows and the pathway will end at some point, right? Then that's the end of the pathway. So we have ADF, AEF, ACEF. And um, the fourth one is BCEF. 
it's not difficult at all to, to, to make a complete list of the pathways through the project. So I would like to ask the whole class, how long does it take to complete the first pathway? The first pathway is ADF, right? How long does it take to complete that pathway? Please feel free to refer back to the table or to the AON project network that uh, we drew last time. I got the first answer from Fallon. Uh, uh, Fallon and everybody, please uh, remember that we talk about the weeks, not the dates, right? So uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, but in this case, we talk about weeks. Okay, so uh, Fallon, Alida, and Sophia, you all agree on the number, right? So uh, you are all correct. We talk about the uh, uh, five weeks uh, here for the first pathway. So how do how do we know it is five weeks, right? Uh, we know that A takes one week, D takes four weeks, E takes zero weeks. So we add them up. Uh, there's then we have five weeks, right? Okay, uh, first to be sure, I would like to ask you again about uh, path number two, how long it takes to complete path number two. I got that from Sophia. Uh, also Fallon, good. Okay, so by now, right, everybody should know how to do it. Um, all what we need is we go back to the table of the question or the the AON project network that we drew, right? Then we just look at it and then uh, we just add up the completion times and we're going to have the completion time with the pathway. All right, so A takes one week, E takes three, F takes zero. Right, so that's why we have four weeks right here. Path number three, uh, by the same token, uh, we're gonna have one week plus three weeks plus another three plus zero. The wedding day is just one day out of seven days of the week. So that's why we call that zero week, right? Technically it is one seven week. All right, so in this case, we have one plus three plus three plus zero. Then we have seven weeks. Path number four, but uh, in the same way, right? Four takes, uh, B takes four months, I mean, four weeks. C takes three weeks. E also three, F is zero. So we have 10 weeks, All right? So we list uh, our all four possible pathways through the project. We calculate the individual completion time of each of the pathways, right? So my, ne my next question for all of you is, which one is a critical path? Among the four pathways that we have here, which one is a critical path? All right, so I have that from Fallon, Christopher, Alida, Sophia, right? Good, uh, you are fast. So the longest pathway by definition is a critical path, right? Uh, so we would uh, designate it as a critical path as a following. So this one is actually our critical path. So the, the critical path is path number four, which is BCEF, right? The 10 weeks is not the critical path. 10 weeks is a length of the critical path. Um, the concept is like the, the bottleneck, right? The bottleneck is the resource with the smallest capacity. In this case, the critical path is a pathway with the longest uh, completion time. All right, so now uh, we defy the, the uh, critical path. Now uh, we can say the following. Uh, first of all, let's let's say why we call it as a critical path. So uh, path number four, 
is a critical path of the project because it is the longest pathway. Path or pathway through our project. Right. And we call it the critical path because remember, it will determine the completion time of the entire project. Right. So we know that path four takes four we 10 weeks to be finished. So next we can say the following. The entire project can be completed in 10 weeks as the earliest. Right, uh, so we, we look at the grid path to know how long it takes to complete the project as the earliest. Why do I have to say as earliest? Because if we delay the project in some way, it's gonna take more than 10 weeks, right? But if we try to finish everything as soon as they can be done, then we can complete the project in 10 weeks. Or a more direct way to say this is the following. The shortest, completion time of the project is 10 weeks. Uh, again, the shortest means that if we, we try to complete everything as early as they can be done, then we can complete the entire project in 10 weeks, right? And if we delay anything, if we delay, delay something, then we, we might take more than 10 weeks to finish the project. All right, so at this point, we, need, we already know which one is a critical path, and we know how long it takes to finish the, uh, to complete the project, right? So I would like to ask the whole class the following. If we complete the critical path alone, do we complete the project? Please look at the AON project network if you have that in front of you. If we complete the critical path alone, do we complete the project? Well, let's see the uh, answers from uh, Fallon and, and Sophia. How, how about other students? What do you think about my question? If we complete the, the critical path alone, do we complete the entire project? All right, so I, I see more notes from a leader and from her. But you are all correct because the, the critical path in this particular example is BCEF, right? Uh, it's not everything. Besides the critical path, we have A and D. We have to complete everything, all of the activities before we can say that we finish the project, right? So in this case, um, if we complete the critical path, it doesn't mean that we complete the project. Uh, at all. So let me make a note here. The critical path is not the entire project. Um, because it is only um, part of the project. Or in other words, right? It is only part of the project. Then my question for all of you is, so we know that the critical path is not, is, is only part of the project, right? Then why? Why does it determine the completion time of the entire project? Why does the critical path determine the completion time of 
the entire project. So that, that's an essential question that we, we need to answer here. Let's give it uh, some thought and please feel free to share whatever you, you come up with uh, in, ex in, in explaining or in answering this question. So why do you think that the critical path as part of the project can determine the completion time of the entire project? Right? Why? Please feel free to make any guesses, any insight, any, any uh, kind of take, uh, welcome. All right, so Christopher Tenwick is the oldest completion time uh, when the work is split. Okay, that's one way to think about it. And uh, you, because it's the longest time path, I saw your last name, I, I do not remember. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, another tech, please. Oh, <laughs> okay, see, okay. good. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's hard for me to recognize that. Good. Uh, Fallon, because the other processes can be finished before 10 weeks. Uh, see, again, just log into another. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, okay, so any other take on this? Why do you think that part of the project will determine the completion time of the entire thing? Elita, because CV determined the shortest time and we want to finish the work in the shortest time. Okay. All right, another take on that. Good. All right. Okay. So, uh, you know what, uh, uh, here and there, you get some part of it, but to be complete, okay? And let me try to explain that question with the following uh, diagram. Let me draw something, and then based on that, I hope I can make it clear for you. Why part of the project can determine the completion time of the whole thing, right? That, that's a... That's a, I would say that's an essential question of this whole module seven, actually. If we understand this logic, okay, behind the critical path, then I would think that it's easy for you to do everything in, in this module seven. All right, so that uh, my, my picture is the following. I'm drawing the critical path for now of our project. We know it is B, C, E, F, right? So I draw uh, the B first. And then we have uh, the C. And then we have the E. And finally, we have the wedding day, right? It is zero, but uh, I would like to draw it something with a positive width like this, for us to make sense of it. Uh, and one divided by seven is, is not zero anyway, right? We just call that zero week, but actually it is one seven week. All right, remember the time is the following. Uh, four, B takes four weeks, C is three, E also three, and F is, uh, is zero, right? So I draw this as a critical path, but we should treat this as a time window. Okay, the time window is a problem. And this is a time window. Uh, can we? Now, after we already have a time window of 10 weeks, we ask ourselves, what can be completed in this 10 weeks? First of all, it, it can be easily seen that the critical path can be finished within this time window, right? Because we choose the time window to be 10 weeks. It can accommodate 
the critical path. So now we can finish the critical path in 10 weeks, right? And then how about the A and D? Activity A and activity D are not on the critical path. When can be they, uh, when can they be done, right? So actually they can be squeezed in. They can be done within this 10 week time window. For example, I can draw the A activity as a following. Um, A can be started here. It takes only one week, right? Well, we can squeeze it in. Uh, and activity D, remember D has to have the date before it. Uh, D, uh, let me remind you, D is an entertainment company, right? You have to know A or, or the date before you can sign the contract with the entertainment company. So in the picture, we have to draw the D after the A. So D is right here, four weeks. Right. So in this picture, during the, that 10 week time window, we can finish the critical path and then we can squeeze in all the remaining activities, not on the critical path. And by the end of the 10 week, we can finish the whole thing. Right. So, uh, so I, I hope you see the logic behind why the critical path can determine the completion time of the entire project. So let me, uh, let me explain here. Okay, so the critical path is not the entire project, but it can determine the the completion time of the entire project because uh, the non CP activities can be completed. Uh, in parallel with the critical path. That's the logic behind the 10 weeks. Like the, the time to complete the whole thing, right? Is that good or is there anything that I should uh, elaborate more on? All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you for uh, your feedback. Okay, so uh, in a sense, let's think about that as a time, the 10 week time window that is, and then we can squeeze everything in. Let's choose another pathway and see if it works or not, okay? Let's choose ACEF. Remember in, in the list that we have earlier, ACEF is, ten, is seven weeks, right? This one right here, ACEF is seven week seven week long. Does it work? Can we finish the project in, in seven week? The answer is very easy. No, right? Yes, C is correct. CPA is correct. We cannot finish the entire project in seven weeks because if you look at that time window of seven weeks, the critical path is longer than that already. It sticks out. Seven week is not enough for us to complete the 10 week pathway. And how can we finish the project in seven weeks, right? So that's the logic why we have to choose the longest pathway to be the critical path. So the word critical here doesn't mean that, oh, that's an essential part of the project. It's not. The critical path here only means that it is the longest pathway so that we have the, the window long enough to accommodate all the pathways and all the, the activities inside it, right? So that we can complete the, the whole project inside that time window. I hope you see that, right? So that's, it is like the, the bottleneck is only part of the process, but it can determine the capacity of the entire process because it is a, it is a smallest. And here, because it is the longest, because we need the enough time to accommodate other activities inside the project to be completed, right? Right. So this this inside this picture, I would I would say that is very essential to the whole module seven. Right? Uh, everything else is based on that logic. So uh, based on this uh, picture, actually we can make some claims as a follower. Let, let me go through some of the claims with you. The first claim is the following. So 
any delay on the critical path will delay the entire project. All right, so if we go back to the picture, for example, if we delay B, then B will impact C, right? You have to slide B to the right-hand side. When you slide B to the right-hand side, C also has to be pushed to the right-hand side. E also be pushed and F also be pushed, right? So the whole, the, the, the time window will be extended more than 10 weeks. And it means that we, we have to de delay the completion time of the, the project, right? So as a manager, we don't want to delay anything on the critical path. We have to have enough manpower, expertise, money, all other necessary resources, right? So that we can complete the critical path on time. Other non-CP activities can be delayed somewhere, but the CP activities, they have to be completed on time. Otherwise, we're gonna delay the project, right? So that's the first claim that we make. The second claim uh, is the following. So uh, the, the non-CP activities can be delayed to some extent without impacting our project schedule, right? So non-CP's activities can be delayed to some extent uh, without affecting our project schedule. All right, let, let's go back to the previous graph. So in, in this case, right, if I delay A a little bit, for example, instead of here, I delay uh, A to that point, right? Then A is still before C. It, it, it can be done in parallel with B based on, based on the information of the question. But as long as A is still before C, we do not change the critical path at all. And if the critical path stays the same, then we have the same 10 week time window to finish the project, right? So in that case, we do not have to change anything. I mean, the, the project schedule doesn't have to be changed, right? We keep the same schedule as before. There's no delay. Uh, or remember, uh, when we move A to here, right? For example, A, the start of A is here, the end of A is here, then remember that D has to be moved to be after A. But then when we move D, then it doesn't affect the project at all because, uh, because D is still before F, okay? D has to be after A, but D has to be before F. And as long as D doesn't impact the F here at all, then we do not need to delay our project at all, right? There's no impact on the project schedule. So that's why, right? We say that uh, the non-CP activities can be delayed to some extent without affecting our project schedule. And that extent where we can move the non-CP activities around is called the select time. Let me go back here. So the extent here is a select time. Uh, or in other words, we can say that uh, non-CP activities Select time. It just means that we can delay it, we can move it around without affecting the project schedule. Right. Okay, so, uh, but then, important thing. If, but if delay too much, then the non CP activities.
uh, will impact the project schedule. And then they even become part of the critical path. of the new critical path, All right? So that's a very important uh, claim. So let me go back to this uh, graph right here. So it means that if we delay A too much, for example, instead of A here, we move A here. A has to be before C. So if A is here, then C has to be moved all the way here. And then E has to be moved, also have to be moved, right? So a lot of things will have to be moved if we delay A too much. And in that case, A will be part of the new critical path, right? So uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, the non cb activities, they can be moved around to some extent uh, within the so-called slide times. But if we delay them too much, they will impact our project schedule, right? Okay, so uh, let's go back to the uh, claims and then uh, a related claim is the following. So it means the following, the, the CB activities would have zero select time. Why? Because they, if we delay them, we're not delay the project. So without delaying the project, they have to be zero select time. All right, uh, then there's another uh, claim here that um, there might be there might be multiple critical paths in a project. So possible multiple uh, CPs in uh, in a project, right? How does that work? When do we have multiple critical paths in a project. So uh, for example, we have a project with, with two critical paths, right? Then the first uh, critical path is right here, CP1, like that. It has activities along the way, right? Something like this. Then critical path number two will, will look like the, like the following. It might be of different activities, but the length have to be exactly the same, right? Because between these two pathways, if one is longer, then the longer one is the critical path and the other is not the critical path. So that's why to have multiple critical paths, they have to be at the, at the same length and they must be the longest uh, in the project, right? So the requirement here is they must be the longest. They they must be the longest because we need the time window long enough to accommodate everything, and at the same time they have to be equal, right? Otherwise, the longer one will be the single CP, and the other one is not the CP. Okay, so these are the claims that uh, I hope that you can relate back to the picture that we have earlier. Right. That's that's a heart, that's the essence of this module seven and the critical path method. Okay, so let me remind everybody that uh, there are four methods that we can use to find the critical path. The tally method, we just get it done. Right by definition, the longest pathway will be the critical path. And the second method is called the Gantt chart method. Let me visually draw it for you, conceptually, and then uh, um, as a way for us to understand what a Gantt chart would look like, right? And then I will switch to Excel to show you how to draw the Gantt chart in Excel. All right, so this is method number two for the Gantt chart method. Uh, 
we call it as a Ghent chart method because um, Mr. Gen was an industrialist. Uh, he first used a char chart. So from time that time on, the chart is called the Gen chart. But, um, so let me remind you, it's just another way to find the CP. Okay, so um, how does that look like? A Gantt chart is a two-dimensional two-dimensional graph. So we have to have the timeline of this. On the horizontal axis and the vertical axis will show the activity. Right. And the activities will be laid out from the ABC order or, or the in the correct order from the top to the bottom. So for example, for activity A, we will draw a bar like this to represent A. Right. This bar says the following. We can start A right now. And if it takes one week, then we can finish A by the end of the first week. Right. If you uh, compare that end of the activity A with the number one, right? And we know that we can finish A by the end of the first week, right? The first week is right here. The end of the first week is right here. All right, so that's uh, for A. For B, we will have four weeks long, right? So we go two, three, and then four. So we go, uh, from zero to four, that is that right? So this is for B, activity B. Um, remember, A and B are the free activities. It means that there are no requirements before them. So we can start A and B at point zero, which means that we can start it right away. So uh, activity A and B might look like that if we can start them as early as, as, as possible, right? All right, and how about activity C? C is sending out the invitation cards to the guests, right? On the cards, we have to have the date and the location. So A and B have to be done before we start C. So C can cannot be start here at all, not here. Because if we put uh, C here, then we violate with B. For example, in, in this particular example. So uh, in this case, right, we cannot start C earlier than the uh, end of the fourth week. So if C is a next activity, then the C will go like this. But it goes for three weeks, something like that, but it has to be after B. Right. So in this picture, we're going to see the activity. And together with that, we also have the Arrow that specify the president's relationship. For example, I can I can draw an arrow going from A to to C by the following, right? Another arrow is going from B to C. Technically, you have to to draw it from the end of the activity, but sometimes it makes makes a picture look cluttered. So that's why uh, sometimes I, I draw the arrows from the bottom of the bars like this, right? Otherwise you have to do it like this and then uh, it might look like uh, unnecessary, like, like confusing. All right, so uh, this is a, an example of a Gantt chart, right? You see the activities, you see the timeline, you see when we can start and then finish the activities. We can see the precedent relationship among the activities, right? Or the, the which activities have to go before another activity can be started, right? So that's a conceptual image of how the Gantt chart will look like. Uh, and at this point, I, I would like to switch to Excel and show you how you can actually draw the Gantt chart in Excel.
Uh, I hope you have your Excel ready too, right? If you are using your computer, then you should have your Excel right there. So please follow my steps and, and see how we can do it. It's not hard at all. If you want to uh, shoot a video, please feel free to use your cell phones or anything. Uh, it's not complicated. I, I believe that after I show it to you, you know how to do it. And this is for question 25. Yeah, but we have to learn from, from scratch, right? So that we we really learn the concept. So let me let me show it to you. Uh, let me start this as a totally blank um, area. Right. So in this blank area or blank space, we're, we're gonna draw the GAN chart. Let me zoom it in a little bit uh, for us to see it clear. So uh, I'll make it bigger a little bit. All right. So uh, remember the horizontal axis is for the timeline, the vertical axis is for the activities. Um, I would like to lay out the activities first because we're gonna know how many rows that we need, right? All right, so I type in activity A, uh, skip a little bit to have activity B. The so skipping is to make it clear. Uh, and then we have activity C, then activity D, and then E, and then I, right? So selecting the date, location, uh, guest list, and then entertainment, food, and then uh, the wedding party itself. All right, so these are uh, part of the vertical axis. So I would highlight them to, to be in the middle of the cell, for example, okay? To be closer to the vertical axis. So how to draw the vertical axis here? I would highlight these cells on this side. You can highlight these cells right here. It doesn't matter. But uh, I would highlight these cells, okay? And then I would use a left border button. I hope you can see it right here. Right? If, you, if you click on the drop down, then you're gonna see the, the, left, the left border button. And then click on that left border button, then you have the vertical axis, right? It is a physical vertical axis right there. It looks a little bit dim, right? A little bit thin. Then you can make it uh, thicker by uh, playing with the option in Excel. So uh, you would highlight these cells again and then click on the drop down and look for the more borders. Possibly, I'm using my Windows right now. Your Mac might be a little bit different, but if you look around, you're gonna see the options that I, uh, I'm using here, right? So um, I would look for the thick uh, line option. Right, it looks very thick. Click on that and then double or, or click on the, the border that you want to, to do the border. And then click okay, right? then we're gonna have that uh, thick border right here. So by now, we already have the vertical axis done, All right? So the next step is we have to do the horizontal axis. So here's a, a way to do it. Uh, remember, the, in the timeline, we're gonna punch in the numbers, right? We punch in zero, one, two, three, on and on. In our wedding example, we have uh, 10 weeks Remember the critical path is, is 10 weeks, right? But in, in uh, the homework, for example, you might have more than 30 weeks. So the, the diagram, the chart might look very wide. Right? It's hard to copy onto your Word document or something like that. So here is our, how, I, how I would manage the width of the Gantt chart. Uh, I would click on the letters at the top, right? Click on C, for example. And then highlight, hold on to the uh, left mouse button, and then uh, highlight more cells, I mean more columns, right, like this. And then you can string down one column, right? 
So when you string it down like that, then you uh, do not have to deal with a very wide chart. It's hard to copy anyway, right? Copy it anyway. So uh, in this case, we start from point zero, and then we have point one, point two, point three, point four. Oops. Point three, oh, point four, and then point five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right? At least we need ten weeks because we know from the critical path that the project is going to take ten weeks as the oldest, as the shortest. Okay, so now we already have the. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, we need to have the horizontal axis, right? So you would highlight these, and then you would uh, do the bottom border, right? And then you can do uh, more borders and do it uh, thicker, like this. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. After I, I highlight, I go to more borders, and then we need to choose a thicker style line. And then we're gonna uh, adjust the borders that we need to make, right? And then click OK. And then we have the horizontal axis, right? So by now we have the activities on the vertical axis. We have the timeline on the horizontal axis. So we are ready to show the activities in our Gantt chart. Um, a remember is is a free activity. We can start A right away. So we start from point zero. And it takes one week to finish A. So I just click on that cell and then I fill in the color. Right? Fill in the color, then we see the activity A right away. Activity B, right, can be started right away and it takes four weeks. So I uh, highlight those four cells, click on that B, then we also have the four, uh, the activity B. I would like to ask the whole class where can I? Where can I draw the C here in, in this Excel? Please tell me the reference where I, I should click on and, and start the activity C. What do you think? All right. So uh, C, G8, J, Lean, also G8. That is correct. That's correct. I cannot start it here because if we, if we start C here, we're gonna violate with B, right? Uh, to send out the cards, we need to know the location and dates. So if we send out the cards at that point, on the card, we only have the date, we don't have the location, right? So that's why we have to, to, to start it here. And you don't want to start here because if we start here, then we all already delay the project by one week, right? So we have to start it right here. Y of the B. And it takes three weeks, so I just highlight three cells and do it right there, right? Activity D, remember, D is entertainment. We have to know the date. That's the only requirement before D, right? So you have to look for A. Uh, at the end of A, we can start D. It uh, takes four weeks, so we, we just highlight like this. I hope I, I do not go too fast. Uh, any question? For clarification uh, now. You good? All right. Let's continue. So um, for D, we just look for it, right? D has to be after A, so I, I uh, look for the end of A and start D, right? For E, remember, uh, we have to have A and C done, right? A is a date, C is a uh, guest list. So before we choose catering, those two activities A and C have to be done. So E can be started earlier than this this cell right here, right? So and it takes four weeks, three weeks. So I highlight three weeks and then we fill in the colors and we have the E, right? And then finally, the the wedding day can only be started uh, after we already have entertainment and and food, right? So you look for D and E. And you look for the end, uh, the late, the latest date among the two activities, right? And then uh, we can start the app right here. It is only a thin line because it is zero. 
but in this case, we can trick it a little bit. Uh, I just make this column to be a little bit narrower. Okay, it's not a week yet; it's just only one seven of, of a week. So, and then we fill in the numbers, and we have the uh, average activity, right? So by now, we already have the basic Gantt chart. But to be complete, you have to put in all of the arrows. Let me show you how to do the arrows. I will go to insert right here and then click on shapes. Uh, I hope you see that right. Go to insert and then uh, shapes. And then you would need to choose uh, an arrow some, uh, somewhere here, right? Click on that. And then, um, for example, in this case, I wanted to show going from A to C, right? So I go from the end of A and point the arrow to C like this. Uh, and because, uh, because of the, the shape of the arrow, I, I don't want to have that shape. I would like to make that as an L shape, right? Then I will move, hold on to the middle of the arrows and just move the leg of the arrow like this, right? Then we have the first, the first arrow right there. The arrow is crucial because it tells us the precedence relationship, right? A has to be done before C can be started. So, so the arrow tells us that. Um, but in, in the case of C right here, there's another arrow going from B, right? So let me go uh, from B, click on the, okay, so click on insert and then click on shapes and then use the arrow one more time and then we start B, uh, start at B, and then we point that to, uh, to C, and then you can cut a, all right, sorry, it's, it's a little bit small. You can, you can touch the middle of the arrow, right? And then move it by like that, right? So these two arrows means the following. Be, before we can start C, we have to finish A and B, both of them, first, right? Um, before we can start C. So uh, by the same token, you're gonna do the, all the other arrows for the whole chart. There are seven requirements, seven precedent relationships in the table. Then you have to have all of the seven arrows right here in, in this chart, right? Um, and if we move B, C, E and F, if we delay any B, C, E and F, then you're gonna see that we're gonna delay the project. So that's why we can recognize that B, C, E and F are part of the critical path. And if they are part of the critical path, I would like to use another color to highlight them, right? So these are our um, uh, activities on the original critical pathway, okay? So the complete picture will have the critical path, we have the non-critical path activities, and then we have all the arrows to maintain the precedence relationship among the activities, right? Um, so that's a that's a way to draw the com the, the Gantt chart in the uh, in Excel, um, right? Let let me show you the complete result of this chart. If we go to module seven and look for the Gantt chart uh, PDF file, right? Then you're gonna see the the next thing that I'm showing you here. So in the end, if you complete the whole game chart, then it's going to look like the following. Uh, the critical path is a red highlighted uh, activities right here. By right? A and D are the, the non-CP activities, right? So we can finish the project in 10 weeks as the earliest. But if we delay B, C, E, or F, right, we're going to delay the entire project. Or if you delay A and D too much, right? We also delay the entire project. For example, if I delay A from that point to be somewhere here, then C will be impacted, then E and F will be impacted, right? Let me go back to the Excel file. Let me uh, demonstrate it. For example, if A is moved to be here, that's not good because the C will be impacted, right? The C will be, will be moved to be here. 
And see if, if C is here, then E and F will be moved too, right? Then we're gonna delay the entire project. So we can not delay we cannot delay the non CV activities that much. Uh, a has a select time of three weeks because we can only delay A to this point right here. Right. So if you compare the new start date, which is three down here, and the old start date of zero down here, then we know that A has a select time of three weeks. We can move the start date of A around within those three weeks, right? So we call uh, the slide time of A as three weeks. The D can be moved by five weeks, uh, five weeks somewhere here like this. So this is a slide time of D, right? Five weeks. So we move it around without affecting uh, our project. Remember, I'm talking about the study, okay? The study here, or if we move the study to be, to be uh, for example, here. Then the D is still before the F activity, and we still keep the same schedule as before, right? But if we delay D further than this, we're gonna impact our project schedule. Uh, that's not good. So uh, with that, right, um, I would like to say the following. In the future, in the future, uh, if in, in your real life work and job, a project will be much more complicated than this. It can be 100 activities, it can be 1,000 activities, right? Then we cannot do a visual chart like this and, and hope to know how to track the movements of all of the activities, right? There's no way for us to visually check all of the activities at the same time. So in that case, you have to use some kind of software, right? Like um, the, most, the most used software, I would think, is a Microsoft uh, project professional software, right? That, that's a professional um, software suit that will help you with the, the Gantt chart. You enter the data that will shows up in the Gantt chart, and then they will calculate the critical path for you. They will calculate how long it takes to finish the entire project, right? Things like that. Uh, but that's for the future. For now, we are learning the concepts. So that's why in, in module, uh, for question 25 in the homework, I ask you to, to draw the Gantt chart by yourself, okay, in Excel. Um, okay, so uh, with that, I would like to close uh, this method and I would like to talk about the, the next method right away. The next method is called uh, the boxed AON method. So we call it as a boxed AON method because instead of the circle, we would draw the boxes, right? So let me share uh, with you the, the image of a box. So remember, uh, earlier we, we drew the AON project network, right? We do the circle, we write in the A, and then we draw, write in B, C, D, E, F, right? But in this case, we're gonna, we, instead of the circle, we're gonna draw this uh, square. In the textbook, they, do, they only do six cells. But I, but I believe that the nice house is more uh, kind of, uh, is easier to grasp, right? So we're gonna use a nice house to learn the concepts of the box error and method. Uh, in the software like Microsoft Professional, they, uh, I, I, they really do the six cells. Possibly because of that, the, the book uh, does the six cells. But for learning, I would say that the nice, the nice house is more, uh, intuitive, okay? So let me introduce you the, the boxes, and then next time we're gonna do the whole method through. Okay, so let me go back to the whiteboard. So next we go, we move on to the next method, to find the critical path, and it is called the boxed AON network method, right? So what we draw here is the following. Um, we would uh, draw a square like this for nice house of nice house.
Here we would write down the ABC, right, or the identification of the activities. So ID is activity identification. Down here we write out the time to complete the activity, right? Activity time. It is an uh, time. It is a time estimate, but we assume that it's correct and fixed. It will not change. Okay. And now um, up here we're gonna have the earliest start and earliest finish. It does an acronym, right? So earliest start is a point where we can start the activity as earliest. So earliest start and EF is the earliest finish. And you know what? There is a relationship between the ES and the EF as a following. So if we start uh, at that point, it takes T weeks, then we finish it at that point, right? So actually among the three numbers here, there is a, an equation. So um, the oldest finish equals the oldest, oldest start plus T, right? Okay, so down here we have uh, two more cells. We have the latest start and latest finish. So latest start, LF is the latest finish. So by the same token, we also have that uh, relationship. The LF, the latest finish equals the latest start plus the time it takes to complete the activity, right? So we, we, we always have that kind of relationship among the numbers. And then finally, we have to fill in the select time. ST stands for select time. There's two ways to calculate it. Either we take the latest start minus the earliest start or the latest finish, subtract the earliest finish. Right? Basically, we take a number out here, subtract that number up there, a number out here, subtract that number up there. The reason why we have that uh, equivalent is the following. So if we look at uh, one activity, that's a started, that's an ending. Then if it is a non-CV activity, we can delay it, right? Like this, we can delay the start date. It means that we can also delay the finish date. So if we subtract these two points, then we have the slight time. Or equivalently, we subtract the, the other two points, then we also have a slight time. So either way, it's gonna be the same slight time, right? So that's my introduction to the boxes to you. And on Wednesday, we're gonna use these boxes to, to draw up the network one more time and solve it through, right? So thank you all for joining me. Uh, I would like to see you back on, on Wednesday. Have a great, great rest of your day.